perfectly normal radio. It sounds a little something like this. I wish I had every fucking PlayStation game in the world, but all I have is RPGs, man. It's the best I can do. I mean, everyone has their role to play. I don't want to play Madden 96. If life is but a game, well, then I'm going to go rob my mom's purse for quarter. Welcome to Perfectly Normal Radio. We're getting damn close to catching the real killers. Or, uh, maybe we're solving mysteries. Ooh, maybe we're just talking and relying on probability to connect the dots and leave us drowning in gold doubloons and lifetime achievement awards. That's actually probably not too far off. Do you remember when there were crazy clowns everywhere? No, the, the other time. Actually, both of those times. Well, I only bring it up because the man is clamping down on this little mom and pop operation. It turns out we've passed our legal limit of comedy type phrases, and now we must fulfill our legally mandated comedy podcast requirement of talking about juggalos. I know, once again, big government, corporate America, and pretty much everyone besides the United Negro College Fund is reaching their grubby little tentacles into our uteruses and telling us how to run our business. So here's clowns, for you and yours. I see. They were having Tupperware parties ICP. long before the land bridge people came over. ICP. Man. <laughs> there was nothing but insane clowns everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's people that go to that show and they, they wear makeup. There's like, people who are out being insane clowns all over the roads and yep. uh, webcams and security cams of, the, of America right now. And they don't really have anything to be a group about because the idea of an insane clown posse has been taken for you. Yeah. So they're kind of they're kind of screwed. Can they I have like the insane clown association? Can <laughs> it's I just, not as good. Because I saw this on. I would not disclose the person's name, but they're an ICP Tandori fan. Tandoori Chicken Head Forty Seven. <laughs> yeah. It was almost like they were talking a different language because it was all in Juggalo speak, pretty much. They had their face painted, and they're gonna go see such and such rapper from that <laughs> record label who also had their face slurred painted. mumbling, aka <clears throat> Juggalos. And they were they were excited to have a Fago war on stage with the fam. And I was like, what the fuck does the fam mean? What does that mean? And then I had to look it up, and I realized the it was fam it was family because that's that's the name yeah. of their subculture is the family yeah dude because there was that one guy who doesn't even like music or the music or and he doesn't do drugs no nah, he doesn't do <clears throat> drugs wait oh wait is that the same guy that wanted to kill people no he was just there he because like he, he liked the family ah uh, had this like blink 182 look to him and he says he doesn't drink or do drugs and he doesn't get into the music but the people accept him so he's there oh is that the same people that were hanging out with a pregnant girl that was smoking heavily? I think after they spray painted her mouth. Ah, yes. Spray painting of the face. Yeah, there's a there's an order to these things. Ugh. Man. So are these random hideous and violent clown appearances, does that have to do with the ICP being known as a gang? Is this the gang side? I think it's just people being outrageous in a very boring way. Yeah. That's <laughs> all. It didn't even start in America. It started over in England. Or was it Europe? Was the, it? They're the origin of many boring things. England, Kansas, Russia. I think there's a few videos of people pranking people on, like, TV shows from, like, some Latin country. They were doing, like, Halloween scare pranks and stuff. Like, one of them was people walking down into the subway and a clown shows up. He gets hit in the nuts of the football. Yeah. I think it just picked up. There's people that are like, oh yeah, let's just scare people with dressing up like clowns. Yeah, man. The internet is like the unwashed handshake of the mind. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you have a dumb idea? Let's do it. So now it just kind of caught fire and a lot of people are doing it and whatnot. I think... Yeah. I, I honestly don't believe it. I think it's just people like just saying that it's happening and it's not really happening. You think people making up the clown I think people make it the clown You can up. have like 9,000 layers of meta to everything if you want. It's not like Inception where you have to put like six layers on it or something because you're going to have to wrap this fucking movie up at some point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is real life. It can be weird and dumb and dull forever. I just haven't seen it myself so I'm like nah. Or, uh, you gotta make it high enough in enough top five lists of yes. creepy things caught on video or whatever. Or, uh, Which I can't wait till someday they stop <clears throat> making everything a top something list. Because sometimes I just want to watch dumb blurry photos of some bullshit. Yeah. 
Like I don't need Which, to. I don't need you to rank the blurry photos of bullshit or the. I will say that that one top ten of blurry stuff was pretty good with the guy that was like leaving the airport and never seen again. Yeah, totally. But it also could have been like crazy shit that happened, bro. Yeah. And then you know you could waste less time with a number on the screen and then some like moving images and some music probably down to more blurry photos of weird bullshit i think we could definitely blame buzzfeed for half of that because that place is cancer i don't know anything about buzzfeed but i'm willing to motherfuck them if you say it's a they are a bunch of motherfuckers fuck you buzzfeed like, like, they are responsible for i hate you bullshit onto the internet. they I they you. very much responsible for I being very whiny you. politically and spewing a bunch I of stupid you. political stuff when they even should just stick to people you. eating nasty shit they are the ones Ooh. Knocked over the coffee. At the going No, no, no. no All right, going, no, you going. stupid motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Well, you were... If you're going to cross the road, then stand there and take your first step. Don't just almost take your first step, but then don't go with the jello pudding. Uh huh, yeah. Long before the cock ran, when Broncos still roamed the LA freeways, NASA learned the hard way not to mix orange juice and dynamite. Those rocket surgeons thought they knew it all. But they forgot that some heroes can disappear for decades at a time, and others will fucking stab you to death if you're going around with some other guy or faking moon landings. Those space races had their telescopes watching the skies. But they didn't see this shit coming out of the desert. Oh no, they didn't see this shit at all. I hope that clears up the next bit for you. Who's Jimmy Walker? He was the fourth man on the moon. Oh, okay. He was a stowaway. The guy that trumped through the desert and they made a movie about it. <laughs> and then they were like, yeah. Was he one of the guys that was talking about the moon base? The him terraforming? And, him and OJ escaped the soundstage made back to civilization. And That's they why they were chasing and they OJ's kicked in, Bronco. They kicked in the first door that they saw, which is a hotel room, and it just so happened that they were selling OJ merchandise. And OJ flipped shit, which, I mean, you know, under the oh, circumstances... Oh shit, gold chain! Yeah. You, just got, you just got told that the entire space program was a fucking farce, and that you are expected to spend the rest of your life corroborating this lie... And then it turns out these motherfuckers who, after you go through the desert for days, you kick open a door because time is of the essence when you don't know, you know, when the next time you're going to pee is. And these motherfuckers have got your jerseys laid out. They probably got his wig from uh, the Naked Gun when he couldn't get through the doorway. Oh, yeah. They probably had that wig and they were selling his Afro wig to just any old asshole. Yeah, so? Naked Gun, that's back before he was a murderer. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to tell you that I know all of the sordid tale of Warenthal James Simpson. But I do know this. I spent a great deal of time <laughs> not caring what was going on. And the world did not care that I did not care. And our relationship has never been the same since. Do you ever feel like the movie Teen Witch? Not the titular Teen Witchler, but the movie itself. No? Oh. I had a whole dealio on Teen Witch written. We were going to talk about, you know, top that and how much the real guy singing sounds like the real guy singing for Millie Vanilli, who, who by the way, uh, when they got caught lip syncing on stage, which ruined their 15 minutes, if you like contemporary news, if they had just blamed it on the rain, an expression they were more than familiar with, all would have been forgiven, and they'd be selling biker shorts on Jimmy Kimmel today. Um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, we weren't. We are not gonna talk about Teen Witch. Which means we're not gonna talk about Teen Witch being an allegory for the transition of Bronze Age Semitic cults from the harvest and fertility temple-based system to the personal savior sex giving rise to modern Christianity and explaining such bizarre narrative choices in the old, new, and Teen Witch Testaments. Breathe in, boys and girls. <sighs>
Or maybe we talk about how brilliant the opening to I Want to Be the Most Popular Girl is when she opens the front door and the music starts, but then she closes the front door because she's not ready to face this new chapter and the music stops, but when she opens the door again, the music starts again and the montage goes fucking forward. Or that the song I Like Boys, if you just wrote an actual chorus for it and like made the guitar parts less sarcastic, it's a perfectly reasonable song. You could give it to like the Runaways or the Rondells or Heavy Cream or Dream Wife or Elastica or the Lunachicks or L7 or anybody. Um, yeah, see, we should have just talked about Teen Witch. It would have taken a lot less time. And now you've got no idea what you're getting into now. So Mark, if you could only me. keep five possessions, what would they be? Oh man, um, my Rachel Ray uh, uh, cups and like saucers and stuff. Oh, that already counts as five. Thank you, um, <laughs> David. What yeah. teacher in school made you the most impact on you and why? <laughs> really? Um, McDay, Coach McDay, <laughs> or McKnight School, whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever showed you were working. <laughs> He's a good teacher. I like him. <laughs> Uh, Alright, Mark, what do you want on your tombstone? Oh, um, pepperoni, sausage, and mushroom, I think is exactly what they say in the commercial. My uh, my band director as well, Mr. Hearn, who is also really awesome. <laughs> my band director, Phil Spector. He, uh, he actually gave me a lot of good advice that I didn't listen to because I was a dumb teenager. I came in the money hole every time I got a chance. <laughs> How would your friends describe ah! you? My friends would describe me uh, without enough detail for you to really get to know me. <laughs> They're not very adequate when it comes to, like, you know, human being type stuff. Like, you know the stuff that me and you are all awesome at? They're not so good. I, I, oh, wait, can I change my answer? Pass. <laughs> all right, what age do you feel right now and why? Oh, God. Mentally or physically? Age. Spiritually. I don't know, 20, 28? And why? I don't feel like I'm in my early 30s. Uh, I feel like I'm not in a career aspect to be in my early 30s. I'm still in school. Uh. And everyone's telling me that, you know, you're, you're in your 30s. You should be doing this. Or you fucking meet people that are like five years younger than you and they're like, CEOs. <laughs> Astronauts. Yeah. David, you're in your 30s now. You should be eating triple stacks of pancakes. <laughs> Mark, if you were president, what is the first thing you would do? <laughs> I would smoke a big cigar and I would yell out the window, who's first? And then I would see what kind of reaction that got, what they thought I was talking about. <laughs> I'd go, who's first? And then either someone steps up to get the beaten or get the second or <clears throat> someone, was someone's going to challenge me to Galaga or I don't know what's going to happen, man. Um, maybe I'll go to each individual person in the country and I'll just be like, all right, let's do it. And then we'll see what they think oh, I meant. Oh, damn. That was a, almost a All right, error. David, if you could witness any event of the future, what would it be? Oh, that'd definitely be the Earth Romulan War. Are you fucking serious? Fuck you, man. It's your answer. You are serious, David. You just answered it. Yeah, yeah I guess the Earth Romulan War. Mark, who do you admire most in life? Oh, Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Why? Just because of that fucking color purple. Because... Oh, that's Alpha 90 right there. Because being an Uncle Tom used <clears throat> to be like a strictly male thing. And she's blazed new grounds in uh, female Uncle Tomdom. I Aunt, like the, Aunt Teresa, maybe we can call him. I like that that was an upper 90 answer to that better. Yeah. Boom. David, why did you choose that profession? Law intrigues me. No, I'm talking about that profession, not the law profession. What profession? That profession, David. Uh, Come on, answer the question. That profession, why did you choose it? Uh, I was, I uh, needed a job, and uh, the movie theater was hiring. Oh, yeah. that's why you chose that profession? And there's this picture here of, like, someone slopping a stick into honey, and it says, what how do you spend your that? free time? What the fuck was that? What? Hold on, what? Can you put that in the form of a question, Jason? <laughs>
and this has been Perfectly Normal Radio. You can find this program, among other fun things, at personorpersons.com. Once again, that's personorpersons.com. Or look for Perfectly Normal Radio wherever you look for podcasts. The old thanks again and more are in the show annotations, so be sure and drink your Ovaltine over at personorpersons.com for stuff you might want to know about stuff we might want to tell you. Like, thanks for listening. Plus, that black girl looked like an inbred white girl, which you could be... You could be whatever Thanos is, or you could be whatever uh, some other race of alien person is, and if you look like an inbred white girl, that, that sucks for you.